take a look at this video that came into the massive wave plowing its way through the banks of a village and washing away the entire town. As you can see, we're going to pull this video up. Horrified onlookers at the time on a suspension bridge right above that. The water surged through the streets. Just one scene of the massive swath of destruction along Japan's northeastern coast. And our David Muir is in Tokyo this morning with more on that devastation. Good morning, David really extraordinary images, Bianca. Good morning to you from Tokyo. As you know, our team arrived here this morning, and one of the first things we did as we traveled through the airport was to talk to the locals. The Japanese were gathered there, all of them watching the monitors, the breaking developments, Fukushima, of course, just this morning. Uh, these are veterans of earthquakes here, but one man just shook his head and told me he's never seen anything quite like this. They're the lucky ones, the tsunami survivors, some plucked by helicopters from rooftops, this child carried away in a rescuer's arms. Others fled in their bare feet. This man says he escaped water that came up to his neck. And there are still so many more waiting to be rescued. 1,300 miles of coastline now covered by an epic trail of destruction. Ships tossed, cars thrown on top of buildings. All part of that deadly twin disaster that struck Friday afternoon. This is like the real thing. This is the real thing. Beginning with an earthquake so massive, it moved the entire island eight feet to the east. Skyscrapers nearby were swaying like trees in the wind. Trains shook on their tracks. American Marty Keener was in Sendai near the epicenter. This one went on forever. Everything started toppling and, and falling. And then came round two, that three-story wall of water washing away everything in its path, traveling some six miles inland in some places. 24 hours later, people here are still fearing more. 200,000 are living in temporary shelters. There are reports of three missing Japanese trains, along with a ship feared swept away by the waves. Fires are raging up and down the coast in more than a million households without water. American Ryan McDonald lived through it. Oh my God. He took this video near Sendai as the quake struck. He's now running low on food. The only other things I have in the house were like this half thing of tomato sauce, which I'm going to make that work somehow. There have been so many aftershocks here, even Japanese television hosts now wear hard hats on the air. Meanwhile, on the ground and in the water, rescuers continue their race to find more survivors. And when you talk about rescuers, as you can see here behind us, it is nighttime here in Tokyo. We're several hours ahead of you back in the States. And so when the sun comes up this morning, those rescue efforts will begin again in earnest. And I can tell you, Bianca, that just moments ago, aftershocks, again, you could feel sort of the, the hotel off to the side here swaying. In fact, when we arrived here this morning, they had just one elevator shaft that they were allowing us to use precisely for that reason, the aftershocks that they've been feeling here for now more than 24 hours.